everybody, I'm Amy, this is my wife Maggie, Hello. and together we are Thinker Thema, and we are super excited to be reviewing for you today Evacuation by Vladimir Succi and Delicious Games, and spoiler alert, it is a fantastic game and I can't wait to tell you why. <laughs> in Evacuation we find ourselves in a world that uh, we need to evacuate because the re solar radiation has reached a point where the land now is uninhabitable and uh, we need to go now. So we're going to be transporting all of our uh, people and our factories and, uh, and even stadiums <laughs> across to the new world in our airships and so we can start production uh, all over again. Whoever can do that the best will end up being the winner. Now these two worlds are represented on the game board. We've got the old world here and the new world with all these beautiful empty hexes on these different terrains where we're going to be building up our production. At the beginning of the game, everybody starts with one corner of the old world that has their player tokens on it that represents their production level of the three key resources. There is gray, which represents steel, uh, orange that represents energy and green that represents food. And we're going to sum the uh, colors that you can see here across population and factories to give us the total amount of that resource that we're producing. However, as the game goes on, we're going to be turning these tiles over to represent the fact that these people and factories have now moved. They are on their way to the new world, but they're not there yet because what we need to do is we first need to build ships. And so once you're able to pay the resources to build yourself a shining new ship, we're going to be turning over these tokens to represent their departure and then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting the factories and a representation of each of the population that we've turned over um, into our old world. At the transport round, we're able to load up the ships according to their capacity and pay energy to move the ship across our player board from the old world to the new world and unload all of those things onto the new world. Now, why do we want to place them here on our new world? Well, because then and in another action, we're going to spend the appropriate amount of steel if we're moving population um, and be able to place out these factories and population onto the new world. And when we do that, it's going to increase our production on the different colors that we select over here or the color of the factory. So what we're going to be doing is we've got the same three resources in the new world and their production is represented by a track here in the new world, which is going to increase. And then in the income round uh, throughout the game, we're going to be separating our new world and our old world production. Our old world is based on this and our new world is based on what we've built over here. And the reason why you want to build up your production in the new world is one, you need to because it's one of the victory conditions, <laughs> um, but two, it's going to enable you to build stadiums and infrastructure in the new world where you need to spend the resources that exist there. So either you need to be generating them there or you need to be doing a lot of shipping across mm. from the old world. Now the game also encourages you to build up your new world because across the four years or rounds of the game, there's going to be increasing requirements from your new world. So in the beginning, you need to feed your people from the resources or the food found in your old world. But as the game goes on, that requirement shifts into the new world. So hopefully you've increased your production in the new world by the time you need to feed the people that have moved there. So how do you get things done in this game? Well, first of all, you've got technologies that are sitting on your player board that you can unlock and these are asymmetric across the players and they're going to give you a little bit of a helping hand um, in different directions in the game but the main action selection system in this game is shown at the bottom of your player board. Now in the basic version of the game that Vladimir recommends that you start with you are going to have um, cards that really have no meaning aside from the fact that they are going to be placed underneath one of these four categories of action. So you will simply decide which action you want to take and place a card to represent um, you taking that action. You're also going to move your action track up because the first actions are free, but as your turn goes on, they start to cost you additional energy. So you can play for it as long as you like, as long as you have the energy to pay for it. Um, there are a couple of other things going on here. Uh, if you 
happen to choose the same category of action four times, that's also going to cost you additional energy. So you've got to be careful about which categories you use. And at the end of the round, once everybody has passed, you're going to sum up the values of the categories that you've taken. And that's going to represent your power value. This power value is going to be used in two ways. One, it might provide you with a little bonus for achieving a certain value of power at the end of the round. But most importantly, it's going to be driving your two satellites along this progress track that runs between the two worlds. And this is important because at the beginning, your satellites are helping the old world by producing a lot of resources here. But as they move across to the new world, you're going to lose connection with some of those resources. And it's not until it gets further along this track that those resources are going to repopulate in the new world. So you will lose connection connection with your satellites. Uh, this progress track also dictates whether the energy used for actions comes from your old world or your new world. Um, so a lot to think about in this game and we're going to give you an in-depth understanding of each of the different modes and modules of the game. So skip ahead if you want to hear us talk about that. Otherwise we'll cover off some of the nitty gritty in our review which we'll take you through now. So when Vladimir set out to design this game, as he mentioned in his designer diaries, he thought about Euros and the fact that in a Euro game, you're always building up. You start with nothing mm. and then you want to build up towards this thriving kind of resource production. And he thought, well, what if I reverse that and you start with a lot and then it all crumbles down. But mm. then he realized, actually, that's not very fun. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like a rags to riches versus riches to rags. Yeah, not, not as, as fun satisfying when you're yeah. playing yeah so okay. then he thought what if it was a u-shaped story arc in that you start with a lot of things and then at some point you lose all of those things and then you build it up again and that is exactly what he has done here with evacuation and we cannot stress how much the mechanics and the theme really make you feel that this way. This is like, I think that is the perfect kind of thematic overlay for what happens then and how you feel <laughs> as you're playing this game. Because you're definitely starting out with the riches of, you have this abundance of production. You're like, oh, I can do all of these things. And then as you're, you, you're kind of moving towards the new world and there's all these pressures to do so, you're going, oh, I'm in this sort of in-between. And sometimes things feel very, very... Uh, um, what do you call it? Sort of, we're tight. Things are tight. Um, we have to really budget how we spend things and often take a lot fewer actions and sub -op what feels like really suboptimal um, actions because we don't have that much production. And then all of a sudden we start kind of moving to this new world where we've been building our production and now we've got, it's like, okay, now we can feed our people and we can, we have all this energy. Mm. But, and all of that kind of happens in this very sort of tight yeah time space yeah. so yeah definitely you feel that rags to riches story at it's, the it's, end when yeah it's get... like riches to rags <laughs> riches, to riches to rags yeah. um in the middle of the game you have all this uncertainty around am i actually going to be able to do this yeah. and i love games that can make you feel that way and then at the end of the game it all somehow comes together and Sometimes. you're like oh, yeah. <laughs> I've had games like, where it just, uh-oh, uh -oh. I've made some huge mistakes. <laughs> I am so sorry, my people. But uh, yeah. It reminds me of, obviously, Feast for Odin is uh, one of our favorite games. And it mm. has that same kind of idea. There's when you start, you are like, I don't know how I'm ever going to cover my board. This just isn't going to happen it's for me. Daunting and then, task. Yeah, and then something magic happens where all of a sudden you're producing all of these tiles. It's the same idea here. You start off and you're like, well, this is great. I can afford to build shit. I can afford to build stadiums. Mm -hmm. I can do what I want. And then when your satellites <laughs> hit this middle ground and all of a sudden you've got not enough resources on either, <laughs> either planet to do anything, yeah. you're like, this isn't going to happen for me. Yeah. I yeah. don't know why we set out on this yeah. expedition. <laughs> this is this a is idea. bust. What are we doing? Yeah. And, then, and then it slowly moves on. Yeah. yeah. I like the way as well that the game forces you to do some of that. Yeah, it gives so you a pace. Track, yeah, kind of, yeah. You can't just go, well, we just won't feed anyone and we won't give them any kind of entertainment till the very end. It's like, no, 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 no. As you're moving along, these things, these kind of basic milestones need to happen. And if they don't happen, there is an extreme penalty because mm. if you can't feed your people or if you haven't built a stadium uh, by the time they tell you that you need to have one, two or three stadiums on the new planet, you are going to get the 
these penalty tokens mm. and in the basic version of the game that is going to be worth negative one point and we've had games where someone has won the game on six or seven points so every point matters yeah. so if you have a couple of rounds where you collect a negative one mm. it's almost guaranteed that you won't win the game so it is extremely unforgiving mm. and the other thing is don't leave anyone behind so that's the other way that yes. you can get that you can get these penalty tokens or get kind of points deducted is if by the end of the game you haven't been able to flip over or transport everyone across thematically that is a huge tragedy and, and it feels <laughs> yeah, terrible you're like, oh no oh no there's just one pair of population there and you feel like you're waving you're to like, them from the spaceship and you're like oh, i'm sorry i have messed up i yeah <laughs> i have not been a good leader um here the other thing is it's the type of game that every time you finish uh, and even after you like it, it sort of stays in your mind going what could have I done better? Kind of like if you had done this massive, you know, mm. undertaking, you always are like, you're never quite sure. It's like, I could have maybe done this differently and I could have maybe tried this in a different way. So yeah, I really, I really enjoy that about yeah. this experience. And there's two other mechanics that I really love. One is the progress track because when mm. you first learn this game, you're like, well, that's just a progress track and that just dictates like some of the symbols that I need in order to build over mm. here. Uh, maybe it gives me some bonuses along the way. But actually the timing of how you move your two satellites because they're going to be moving separately mm. along this track is really important because as you move past this first checkpoint, you're going to be losing um, some key production of resources on your old planet. And it's not until you move both of your um, pieces here, your satellites, um, to this side where you get to recover one of those on the new planet. And then when we move over here, recover the other one. So it's kind of almost like you want to hang back a little bit in order mm. to maintain the production in the old world. But then you really want to speed through this middle part because you want to move your efforts to the new world. And there is a key little um, symbol on this track here that shows you that when your two satellites are closer to your old world, then the energy you pay has to come from your old world in order to take actions. Mm. And then halfway through the game, if you're split with your yeah. satellites, then you can spend energy on either side. And that feels really great. But yeah. then as soon as that moves over to the other half of the track, now I have to spend energy from the new world. And yeah. that is just brilliant because it yeah. forces your hand it forces you to re yeah. like at that point that's the point where you feel like what have i done i also love the fact that you can't just go oh well i know i'll just leave one of my satellites behind and send the other one far away so i can build everyone's like no because these can only ever be max one of these sort of intersections away these satellites kind of need to be near they each need, other they for, need them, to to, work for them to work otherwise we really have no no connection and that then forces you to be very very careful with the timing of how and what what stages mm. you use with, with your game yeah and that is interrelated with the actions that mm -hmm. you're taking because of the fact that the power is going to sum to move those satellites yes. and to maybe get you some really cool bonuses <laughs> yes. so you are thinking about that every time you take an action and actually some of the actions are repeated mm -hmm. either on the one or the four here and you can take a less powerful action where you don't get a free resource maybe you choose this one just to get more power to mm. hit the bonus or to move your satellite so there's a lot to think about yeah. um, in this game and that's all really interlinked and it feels super thematic one other thing is the, uh, the the asymmetry in this game is brought in through this t technology uh, tiles, which there are four different sets, but even within those sets, you have like level ones, two, and threes, and that can be kind of randomized within their level. So obviously they've been balanced to their own set, but it gives you still a fair bit of variability because then mm. you have all the different sets to play with. And sometimes you're playing, you're like, oh, that seems too overpowered. And then you're playing, you're like, oh, that's really good though, <laughs> on my board. So there's always like, it seems like there's a good balance uh, yeah. of those things. And it gives you something to potentially like work towards or, or yeah, an yeah. angle. Then. It just helps you leverage a different yeah. element of the game. And yeah, Maggie at one point was like, that's OP. That's over. And then I was like, have you seen your tiles? So in every <laughs> set of tiles, there is something like really cool. So everybody gets to feel good about that. And normally I don't like a lot of asymmetry. Neither of us like a lot of mm. asymmetry in our games, but I felt like it was just yeah. enough to feel like it's not adding any like cognitive burden to the game. You mm. don't have to be like, okay, what set am I playing today? Mm. It's just 
just like, oh, that would be fun to unlock. If yeah. I do that first, then maybe that's going to influence yeah. the order of my actions. Now, a lot of people have been talking about the difficulty of mm. this game. And I, you know, the first game for sure, it is a little bit of, uh, you know, to wrap your head around. But I think the integration with the theme really helps people understand yeah. what they're trying to do. The strength of the mechanics and the theme um, are really going to help people. The thing that doesn't help people and didn't help me was some of the iconography it just takes a mm. little second to process. So the fact that there's circles and squares and sometimes the squares re represent factories, sometimes it's resources, mm. sometimes it's production or not. Um, that took a little while to understand. But I think by by the time yeah. the second or third game comes around, that feels like really smooth. It's really yeah. easy to understand. And I haven't had a problem with it since. Yeah, when it comes to the actual actions themselves, once you kind of know what they are, it's fairly straightforward. And if Very anything, you're like, oh, okay, this is pretty easy. And you know, you're taking the first couple of actions sort of for free energy wise. And then you start getting into the, oh, okay, this is costing me something. Then you go, oh, this is costing me so much. And so a lot of that tension comes into, yeah, how am I going to distribute this? But also making sure that by the end of my turn, mm. for for example, I have a ship that's ready to go and I haven't left enough energy for that ship to be able to move and I've got, you know, the resource. So, so it ends up really being the, um, the actions themselves are not, are not are simple. You just take, yeah, yeah, you take a card and you play one of these actions yep. and then you're only doing a fairly simple action on your turn yeah. before it moves on to the next player. But the decision space mm. is quite wide because there are lots of things that you can get done and you're trying to decide in which order to get those done. And so that's why this game is difficult mm. uh, because you are also trying to do this in four short years which go by like that and also because you have a lot of different pressures on you. Um, so yeah, I just find that this game is like, it's not super challenging in its base mode. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's okay to, so obviously, you know, it's going to take a little bit to, to learn it. It's still it. a Euro game. It's still a Euro, still a not, this Euro is not a game. gateway. This is not like a friendly, like easy, like it, it's a, yeah, expert level game. It's, but it's one of those games that as soon as you finish it, you're like, okay, now I know what I'm in for. I want to play this again so that I can, I can try this differently. I can try that differently. Funnily enough, that is the same experience that I still got after games two. Every time I after play... After game eight. <laughs> well, I think I've now played this, what, like nine or ten mm -hmm, times? Mm -hmm. And and I still... Obviously, you, you do end up learning a lot of the... Um, kind of a bit of the timing. But I still don't know. Like, I still couldn't say that I have classes. Mastered it. Yeah, like yeah. even the core puzzle and then, yeah. So, so there's a lot in this. Yeah, and let's talk about the different modes and modules that yeah. come in the box because there are a lot of different ways to play this game and you can actually pick and mix your ideal mm -hmm. combination of things. So let's start with the race mode, yep. which is the mode that Vladimir recommends starting with, which is basically everybody is focused on what I talked about in how, the how to play component mm. of like getting your production up as high as possible and getting three stadiums. If you get all your production above eight and three stadiums, it's going to trigger the end of the game. Everybody else gets one more turn yeah. and then we do a transport phase and then we will see who is the yeah. winner. Very, very simple to understand. Yeah. I will say in our experience playing the race mode, um, it's very unlikely in your early games that mm. anyone is going to trigger the end game before the four years is yeah. up because it's challenging yeah. to do yeah. so. Um, but it's a really nice introduction I agree, to the yeah. puzzle. And it's teaching you what kind of thematically the core intention of this um, this exercise is. You want to build up your production and you want to make sure that your people are kind of like set mm -hmm. up and happy with their stadium and their entertainment by that by that stage. Yeah. And if that, that yeah. yeah, if that was the only mode in this game, I still would think this game is mm -hmm. brilliant. I would think, you know, that is fun. I want to play it over and over again. But I can absolutely see why Vladimir introduced the second mode of the game, which is the points mode. Now the points mode in the game introduces private objectives. So everyone is going to draft three private objectives that are going to be another key way to give you lots of points at the end of the game um, that isn't related to your production of your mm -hmm. resources. So it's opening up the game a little yeah. bit to give you a little bit of a different direction to follow, which still could lead to winning the game. Yeah. You also are going to have much harsher punishments for not achieving what you wanted to achieve in terms of leaving people behind or building mm -hmm. stadiums. Yeah. That is going 
going to get much harsher on yeah, you. Yeah, and it means that now you have a lot more flexibility because it's not just about, oh, my production. Yeah, the production is going to make things difficult for you if you don't get those numbers up. But at least you have other things that you could focus on and not and can kind of balance things out. You might be all about um, how many uh, population you end up in uh, here or the types of factories that you build or, or even the areas in the board that you build in. Yeah. So all of a sudden you have kind of more equal opportunities to get Point. It becomes more like a point salad. Yeah. It's not super open, but... Um, you still have yeah. those key things that you have to meet, though. So, mm. like, you're still going to be heavily pun- like punished mm. if you are penalized, I should say, if you don't meet a couple of those key kind of conditions. Yeah, so yeah. comparing the race mode to the points mode, Maggie and I now tend to prefer the points mode. Yes. Um, just because it gives us more ways to compete with each other. Um, and so we would definitely recommend starting with the race mode mm. and building up to the points mode. When you feel like the puzzle is starting to get a little same samey because um, it feels a little more on rails in the race mode than it does in the points mode and so I can completely see why Vladimir has included Mm. those two modes. Now let's talk about another way to increase the difficulty of the game which is the advanced actions variant. Mm. So on the back of these action cards that you're placing down underneath your board is actually a Mm. set of unique actions. A whole lot of actions. yeah, Yeah and there is a whole deck of these and what you you're going to be doing is you're going to be um, drafting some of these to begin with in the game and then as you spend as you uh, utilize an action you can either place the card face down to activate one of your basic actions or play it face up and activate the action that's shown on the card Mm -hmm. now they all have different power values and as you spend these you're going to be drawing up from the deck and then having new actions available to you and what we experienced in this game is uh, in using these advanced action cards is that it, it increased the cognitive load yeah, and by the a time lot. time spent per player because now you're not just thinking of how am I going to use my energy for these basic actions you're also going okay so what are the other actions that I have available to me and is this going to be better worse same and then every time I use an action or what card I'm gaining a new one so now I have a new set of actions to choose from so it definitely drastically slows down each person's turn yeah. Yeah. and I think whether you're going to like that mode or not just comes down to personal preference for me I like turns to be snappy but then the game itself to be difficult in terms of which way to Mm. you know what choice to make Um, but in this it becomes a bit more head down Mm -hmm. um, a little bit more like yeah just intense in terms of every player's turn so the time just blows out like the the length of play yeah yeah so we would probably only use the advanced um, action cards if it was just Maggie and I playing Mm. and we wanted a bit of a change but for the most part we prefer playing with the simple action selection mode, just the cards face down. Yep. There's enough to think about yeah, as there it is. is. Yeah. Now, let's also talk about a couple of modules or expansions, mini expansions mm-hmm. that come with the game. The first one is a set of public objectives and uh, you are going to be competing to achieve um, the conditions. Like race objective. Yeah. Yeah. Conditions on the card. Once you do that, you're able to take the card, not play it straight away, but then you get the opportunity to pay the resources, which is going to give you two things, extra production in your new world and a set of victory points at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. I think this is just an extremely easy add which gives you a little more to think about and I just really love it. It's just simple. Adds up to the tension as well of like you know making you making you look at what's the other person doing because otherwise I wouldn't. (laughs) So it gives you a yeah something to go and go oh am I going to do that? It does give you a reason to engage. That's absolutely right. And there's another little module which is this line majority module. So this um, these little modules here yeah, get added to the board in a random kind of position and they're going to um, give you a, a line on these terrains uh, where there's going to be scoring at the end of the game for having the majority of um, you know buildings yeah. in the new world um, across that line and for me this is also a no-brainer ad yeah. um, and it really helps with the two-player scaling so mm. um We'll talk about player mode in a moment, but for me, it just increases the uh, tension here because now Maggie and I are not just looking at this world as one big option where Mm. we can build, but also who's winning on each of these lines. There's definitely a more valuable uh, row or rows or areas. Yeah, so really simple add and really easy to teach. So I don't see why you wouldn't just add that in. It's really great. I mean, for simplicity's sake, I can see how some (laughs) people are like, no, just we'll just leave it up. But yeah, once people are familiar, yeah, yeah, for sure. And so now let's talk about player mode. So um, this game plays great 
At every player every count. Every player we count have, was very satisfying. Yeah, we've yeah. played it at every player count. We've played, Maggie's played a lot solo, which we'll talk about in a moment. Mm. We played it at two and it is lovely at two and I, we yeah. can finish a game within an hour mm -hmm. um, and it feels really substantial. Yeah. Um, and then we've played it at three and we've played it at four and, you know, it doesn't feel too different. It, yeah. Yeah, especially with that um, regular version where you don't have the advanced action cards. The turns are snappy. Yeah, I also find interesting that because it's not a game of high interaction aside from obviously if you have some shared objectives and here so in the new planet you do obviously you know whoever manages to build somewhere first they're taking that that location but I never found even at the four player count mm. that you that you're locked out like you usually have areas to go and as the game progresses because more and more terrain is, is opening up there's even yeah there's there's always somewhere there's it's a new land of plenty I would say <laughs> uh, unless you're playing with these modules where there's it's yes it's a land of plenty but there's definitely but Competitive. Yeah, but there's definitely a more valuable plenty uh, in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll talk about the solo mode as well, because the way the solo mode has been implemented is you have this sort of, again, corner tracker there that is going to um, help determine where the solo bot will um, will build. And with this deck, um, you're going to be then flipping over one of the cards and it's going to tell you what action it's going to take. So in this instance, it would be to take and build one of the stadiums. And then it tells you the number and usually the letter. So the number just means uh, which number from one, two, three. Um, and then the letter is more if the action was to build in here it'll tell you for example if it was if this was a build action it would be three so this just moves three spaces one two three and then depending on whether it's a or b is the direction that it's going to go down so this mm -hmm. if it's b it's one two three and that's where it would um, where it would build so that's sort of how that is being implemented it's essentially just a, a deck and you just usually don't play the last card um the I actually found that element fairly straightforward because really all it's doing is helping you um, refresh the market and, and do things like that and taking over a couple of these positions here. The bit that is a little bit more um, I found more fiddly is the way that it that it works the progress track because it's trying to compete for you uh, with you uh, to um, so essentially to block some of these benefits. That felt a little bit more fiddly than it needed to because then you're actually using two um, bots there so there's going you're competing for turn order against two imaginary kind of um, opponents and then it's it's kind of using the sums of the the bonus so for example the six or if it's an even turn then you're using this and if it's a, uh, an odds turn you're using the other or both and then you're also using the like for one of the the one that's furthest behind is going to use this number versus this number and it just it it just added far too much um, mental sort of distraction for something that was really just meant to be a block a couple of things and then you know you, you work around those so that is one that every time I played it I, I sort of I, I dislike that component and so I kind of ended up sort of eventually just almost like semi-ignoring it or house ruling it because it's just like it, it just yeah it took away from the enjoyment having said that the experience of playing it solo it's, the, it's very similar to playing it multiplayer because it is a fairly well, like you're kind of just worried more about your puzzle and building your own thing. I did find, however, even though we're saying like with the action cards, um, we usually prefer to play without them, like with them in the more kind of basic mode. As I was playing solo, because you have more time and you can just sort of delve into the experience a lot more, I did actually really appreciate being able to use the full uh, actions in the cards as well, because it gave me a lot more freedom to explore and more flexibility and just focus a lot more on my kind of uh, unique objectives and just explore the game in different ways that I usually wouldn't do if I'm playing multiplayer, because I feel a bit more pressured to not take too long mm -hmm. in my on my turns. So I I think it's a it's a it's a really good. Um, it's a good solo implementation aside from a couple of things that for a solo that you're still essentially just beating your own score. Mm. Um, it could have been simpler in particularly with that with that track. But overall, it allows you absolutely to explore the game, explore the puzzle and sort of and obviously all in point mode. You're not doing race mode because you're yeah just looking at your own score. So if you haven't worked it out already, Maggie and I are very, very fond of this game. We love a thematic Euro and I'm sure a lot of you are watching thinking, but it's in space. It's in but... space <laughs> and we so don't like space. We don't space. usually like space games, but I really love the human element of just evacuating one world and setting up somewhere else. You know, it essentially it's yeah. more like a, a farming resources style game, some would say. <laughs> um, but yeah, my I just, I absolutely love that you can just 
feel the thought that went mm -hmm. into yeah. integrating the theme and mechanics. And so for me, this game is a nine, which is not only going to place it in one of the best <laughs> games for this year, yeah. but probably one of my favorite mm. games of all time. So it is fantastic. And I keep thinking about the people that I can introduce to this game. I love to play this game. Nice. Well, for me, it's quite high, but not as high as Amy. It's an 8.6. So I, I really do enjoy this. And I really, it's one of those that I'll keep kind of coming back to. Um, but uh, yeah, I think like a nine. Oh my goodness. That just I know seems like it's so. rare, um, <laughs> but it is brilliant. And I thought it about it a lot. Rare, and yeah. actually I thought about the game a lot. I just couldn't stop thinking about it. And I think the sign of a good game for me and my personal taste is something that is a little bit more tense, a little mm. bit more unforgiving. And at the end of the game, I'm like, oh, I, I see where I went wrong. It was that one move where I didn't generate enough food yeah. or energy and I could have won see, if that had happened. For me, it's interesting because it's like I... I I only realize the error of my ways, usually one or two rounds too late and go, oh no, something's gone horribly wrong. We're usually in a lot of other euros, I'll be like, as soon as I take the action, go, oh, that, that was, was suboptimal. Yeah. Here, there's so many interconnected things and it's like the consequences of your actions. Sometimes you don't really fully feel mm. or experience until, you know, the following round. So yeah. I really, really enjoy that. Yeah, and I'm about seven games in and I'm still looking forward to getting to this, t this to the table and exploring more ways to optimize mm. the puzzle. If if you enjoyed this review, please hit like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll be back with more board game content soon. But otherwise, bye for now. Bye.